everyone and welcome back. In today's video I just thought I would take you on a quick uh, tour of the new additions that I got. So I've just gotten back from the uh, Cactus and Succulent Society of Victoria's uh, annual show and meeting um, which is an incredibly popular event. There is so so many people there so I didn't stay very long um, because it was very very crowded uh, but these are some of the uh, these are the plants that I picked up. Uh, so I'll just take you through. This guy here is a Libivia. Um, they haven't labelled it specifically, but I have a feeling it's Ferox. I'm not really sure though. Um, beautiful, healthy plant, nice colour um, and great spines. Relatively um, damage free. There's a few tiny blemishes, but that's not really a big deal. Uh, I've got this guy here, which is Echinocereus moracallii, um, which I've wanted one of these for quite a while now. Uh, I bought one, but then I killed it. Uh, <laughs> So I got another one. This guy's got a little bit of damage here, but no big deal. And he's got a little pup coming up down there. Um, these guys have an incredible uh, purple pink flower. So very excited about this one. Relatively uh, low spinage. Um, there's some little ones there you might be able to see, but um, not a big deal. Beautiful, beautiful looking plant. Uh, I think sometimes it's called the cucumber cactus for obvious reasons. Uh, then down here, we've got a nice little Rebutia pygmae. Um, this guy is not separately labelled with the exact type, um, but there's a little bit of argument about around the classification of Rebutia pygmae. Some people just say that there's, you know, only a couple of different varieties and everything else um, falls into one of those. Uh, other people will label them all individually and specifically. But anyways, that's a topic for another uh, time. Uh, so the main body of the plant um, has not died, but pretty much ceased operating and so now he's just running off lots of little pups and he's about to flower as well uh, way too young to tell what color the flowers will be but i'm a big fan of rebuches i've got another echinocereus here i don't know the exact type it's not labeled uh with what it actually is but um, beautiful plant and he's about to flower as well which i'm happy about uh got another libivia here which is libivia wrightii um awesome awesome little guy and then back here we've got a Echinopsis hybrid um, which is labelled as Peach um, which is pretty cool. I'm going to take all those little pups off because I don't like the way it looks. And then over here I've got Copiapoa humilis uh, longispina um, which is pretty cool. Big fan of Copiapoas. And they had a few of these actually and this is the one that I picked out. Through here, um, if you can get past the flower, we have a Gymnocalycium and a Mealybug, if you can see that little white dot in there, with a yellow flower. Now, the yellow flowering uh, Gymnocalycium that I have is um, Andrea, or Andrea, however it's pronounced. Um, but this guy's actually got a different uh, body shape, so he could be a hybrid or a different variety entirely. Um, but uh, very, very nice, and he'll flower very shortly. Moving across, something that I'm pretty excited about, this is a Mammillaria Boccasana um, CV uh, Fred. So uh, wildly, wildly popular and quite well known as well. Um, so Fred grows like this, he is a um, mutant or a mutated uh, Boccasana. So uh, no spines, no fluff, although some pups can still produce in the traditional form. Um, these go for a lot of money uh, in my country, in Australia, but I picked this guy up incredibly cheap. And then I've got across here another uh, Rebutia pygmae, which is, uh, I'll try and say it, Biscaya chensis, um, although it looks very much like a Libivia to me, so um, I'm not really sure. In terms of price, look, these were incredibly, incredibly cheap. This guy back here, I think, was around $7. This guy was $10. Uh, this guy here, I think, was $7. Um, the Copia Poa was 10 This guy here was only $5. Same as this one. That one was $5 as well. That one was 7 And uh, this guy here, I think, was $5 as well. And this guy uh, up here was $15. So, look, absolute peanuts for the uh, quality of plants and also for the variety. Um, these sorts of plants are not grown commercially for whatever reason. Uh, and so, realistically, it's the only place you're going to get them is from uh, either from seed or from uh, other hobby growers as well. So I really, really like going to this event. I don't like the amount of people that's there and the amount of people they squish into the venue. Uh, I think it's a little bit dangerous, but 
uh, at the same time, it's, it, it is a good day out. Um, and you get to talk to some cool people and pick up tips and tricks that you won't find anywhere else. So I definitely recommend it. Um, just be prepared for the people. Bring your own box or bag and uh, bring cash, no worth boss. But uh, here they all are. From here, I'll go ahead and pull them out all out of the soil that they're in at the moment and I'll repot them into my mix. I'll let them rest in there for around two weeks. Uh, the Gymnocolysseum will only be a week, will be a year a week, but things like Copia Poa and also the Fred, uh, I'll give them two weeks uh, rest time before I give them a drink. Then they'll have a drink and they'll move in to uh, hang out with the rest of the plants. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy gardening. Thank you.